Well, thanks for uh, making it this far in your uh, conv- list to me ramble on about this convention. Thanks for sticking with me. The final part, the series finale of any uh, NCGOP state convention is the Sunday morning executive committee meeting. <clears throat> and by the way, housekeeping note, um, the reason why you're only seeing the picture of me and my uh, Price is Right Live name tag is because there's a big old pile of laundry right, uh, yeah, <clears throat> right past the little character photo of me. So that's why I don't have Ted Cruz and Ben Carson and the cat photo like I usually do in my background. But anyway, let's talk about this uh, executive committee meeting. Um, we started at 10.42 a.m. Uh, the listed time was 10.30, which actually is better than two years ago, because two years ago we started at 12.25, and the start time was 12. Um, and let me say this. Um, this convention was okay it was not as good as some of the other ones and there were some organizational issues that i've talked about in previous videos that i did not approve of um but with this particular meeting um again there was a last minute um venue change this was this meeting was originally supposed to be in um, the ballroom at the convention center, the Greenville Convention Center. Well, I get to the ballroom usually 10, 15 minutes early. There's nobody there. Um, but, however, I do see a member of the NCGOP staff uh, walking by. <laughs> And I hear them talking. They're talking about how the venue has changed for executive committee meeting. And then uh, a few minutes later, I see somebody else come stand at the door. And uh, they kindly tell me that the venue has changed for the executive committee meeting. It's the same place the convention was. And the weird thing about this convention <laughs> was that the whole entire convention... Um, was not held at the convention center. It was actually at the Hilton Hotel, the Carolina Ballroom. The only things that were held at the um, convention center were the dinners. And this was very odd. But what had happened was everything, like a couple days before the convention, everything was set up to where um, the state party had a nice large space in the exhibition hall aka greenville convention center and this was where the main convention business sessions were going to be held however um donald trump's secret service told chairman wiley that they had to move the um the dinners were going to be held in the smaller Carolina Ballroom, which was where the convention business sessions ultimately were. So they had to do the switcheroo for security concerns over Donald Trump's um, Secret Service. So that's why Dan Forrest in a previous video said this was like the worst convention space that the party has ever rented. And um, so a little note there. Also, another thing I didn't like about the convention was... In years past, it has been tradition for the um, county, the chairman of that county's party, where the convention was being held. Like when the convention was held in Cabarrus County two years ago in Concord, the party chairman of that county would be the very first speaker on on the, the very first speaker at the very first business session on Friday. And then, if the town that the convention was in had a Republican mayor, 
that mayor was also allowed to speak right after the um, county party chairman. And the purpose of these two speeches were to welcome the people to the area and also talk about some things that's things to do, points of interest, historical places, that sort of thing. But places the delegates could do um, before or after the convention. During the convention, they want to take a break from these long business sessions and that sort of thing. That did not happen this year. I was very disappointed. Not so much with the absence of the county party chair speaking, although he did say a brief welcome uh, at towards the end of Saturday's business session after the business session had already been 85% completed. But the mayor of Greenville, North Carolina, is a gentleman by the name of P.J. Connolly, who happens to be a Republican. And I think in the city of High Point, uh, is governed is the largest city in North Carolina governed by a Republican mayor. I think Greenville though is second. P.J. Connolly, he's just a couple years older than me, and he's a former baseball pitcher um, in the Los Angeles Angels organization, and I think he made it up to Double A. I don't think he ever pitched in the majors, but he made it to, like Double A, I think. But pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool I mentioned him, <laughs> even though he was not at the convention, he should have spoke with the convention. Uh, I know it was a busy weekend for him because um, East Carolina University was hosting the NCAA baseball tournament there and a lot of other things going around town, but still, um, again, to not, and I don't know if it was because Connolly's schedule was busy or the NCJP just did decide to break tradition, you know, but still, it just bothered me. Okay, so we had 180 members present at the executive committee meeting. Quorum was met, thankfully. Uh, we started the meeting off with a moment of silence to commemorate the 77th anniversary of D-Day. And then a message from Chairman Watley was to rally the troops for the 2022 and 2024 elections. Talking about an election integrity committee being formed. Uh, the operation in 2020 was huge. They had 570 attorneys along with 3,000 volunteers. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson has been involved in the uh, critical race theory fight. And it should be noted that 40, 41% of the North Carolina budget goes to the County Board of Education. Uh, there's a big... Uh, uh, NCJP school board initiative to get more Republicans elected to the school board. And uh, and then the um, Watley talked about the <clears throat> excuse me, the inadequacy of the venue for this year's convention in Greenville. And he said the party has grown a lot. Which is good. The number of delegates who attend conventions has grown a lot in just the last couple of years. And he says, going forward, um, the state party needs to focus on having conventions just in the bigger cities of Raleigh, Charlotte, and Greensboro, and not so much in Greenville or Hickory or you know that that sort of thing. So the tentative date. I'm not sure if this is the official date, but the date that was announced at the meeting for next year's convention is May 19th through the 22nd. And it's going to be in Greensboro, so I'll be able to sleep in my own bed. Yay! Save on some lodging and use that money for something else. Maybe another little mini trip down the road or something. <clears throat> Uh, the last time the convention was in Greensboro was in 2016, so it's been six years, so yeah, we're due. Before that, it was in 2012. Uh, what's been my favorite venue for the convention so far? Um, kind of a tie between Charlotte in 2013 because I could leave my car at the hotel and take the light rail downtown to convention center or um, Hickory in 2018 where I again you know it was like a, the hotel 
if there wasn't a hill right by the hotel between the hotel and convention center here, where I could walk to the convention center. And you had a lot of restaurants very close by there, too. So, Okay, uh, back to Watley's report. It was noted that coming up on October 9th, there's going to be a sportsman banquet, the second annual one. It's going to be a gun raffle there. Um, the event in 2020 raised $175,000. Uh, the Trump dinner from Saturday night uh, raised $750,000. Um, and then Watley talked about how Trump endorsed Ted Budd for U.S. Senate. This uh, surprised even Chairman Watley. Um, he says it is his duty as well as anybody serving in the state party to remain neutral in the primary. Uh, the results of the straw poll were read. Uh, 44% for Mark Walker, 29% for Ted Budd, and last and hopefully stay in the least is Pat McCrory with 17%. Um, then Vice Chairman Susan Mills gave a brief report saying that she's going to work with Sherry Lynn Womack who is a member of the Lee County School Board. They're going to work together on the um, State Party's School Board Initiative program. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, we heard from Keisha Weinberger, and then we heard from Catherine Whiteford, uh, State YR Chair, talking about the July 10th State Convention for the YRs in Mooresville. I wish I could have gone. Um, she did get reelected. She's done a really good job. I wish I could go to more of their events, but it's like, ugh, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a catch-22, right? I'm 35 now. By the time I get done college, I'll be like 37. So I'll have a window of about three years to be involved in the fully involved, be able to go to events every weekend, hopefully, because I'll have another a new job working during the week, not weekends. But then I'll be have a three-year window to be fully invested in the young Republicans. And at the age of 40, I won't be able to be involved anymore. Yeah. So... And there was some uh, uh, some banter between about Pitt County being split into two districts. You're in first district, someone said. Said no, we're no, we're across the street. First district across the street, and third district is where the convention was actually. Uh, Carl Miska, who's done a fabulous job as third district chair. Um, stepped down from that role at the convent at the district convention back in April's honor with the participation award. Um, great guy, great, great guy. And always, you know, always um, uh, holds uh, people in the party accountable. It's a great thing. Uh, should be noted there were some late. Registration registrants to the executive committee being so there are 206 members present at the um, executive committee meeting. Gee, I wonder why that was because it was a late break in story that the venue had moved. Right, right. Okay. <clears throat> then um, we have election of officers. This is a little bit different than the convention. What happens at this convention? Um, convention, you actually have almost always have two, you know, more than you have two people run for the same spot and you have to have elections. Most of the time, not always, most of the time at the executive committee meeting, you're looking at your officers. These are your treasurer. Your general counsel, secretary, finance chair. Those positions. Most of them are voted in via, via acclamation. So the chairman will have his list of names that he'll want for these positions. Then he'll say, is anybody opposed these to these names? 
and almost all of them are approved via acclamation. Now, sometimes there is a contested um, election, as there was two years ago. Um, I forget what it was. You'll have to watch 2019 Executive Committee meeting video for that, but Keith Kidwell name was brought forth, and I supported him, but um, it was somebody else who got the position. Okay. So for treasurer, we have Brad Overcash of Gaston County. Uh, Mr. Overcash is a longtime district chair as well. Uh, assistant treasurer, Devon, Devon Barber of Johnston County. The uh, credentials chairman as well. Uh, Russ Ferguson of Mecklenburg County is general counsel. Assistant general counsel is Steve Long of Wake County. Secretary is Miriam Chu of Moore County, and Assistant Secretary is Michelle Nix of Carteret County. Um, and I believe only Michelle Nix is um, is incumbent. So the chair got some new people involved, which is I think is always a good thing. Finance chair. Um, Names appointed by the chairman were Kid Kennedy of Wake County and Will Connect of New Hanover was assistant finance chair. Those two names were appointed by the chairman, voted in via acclamation for the executive committee. Okay. By the way, I should tell you, at this executive committee meeting, sitting just a couple seats next to me, was the great former legislature, now real estate agent, semi-retired, lives in Pender County, coastal Pender County, Hampstead area, Carolyn Justice, also served as um, state vice chair for a short period of time from, I think, February 2014 until June of 2015, and then did not run for re-election. Um, so it's cool to see her again, and Anyway, now we have probably the lowest point of the entire weekend. Um, looking at this, how many pages we got here? Uh, let's see, we have one, one, two, let's see, we have 27. Thirteen. Okay. So, at eleven forty-two a.m. on Sunday, June sixth of twenty twenty-one, we have our our um our fool, our jerk, our nincompoop, our moron, whatever you want to call him. Bleh, moment of the convention. And that is Ralph Heiss, Senator Ralph Heiss of Mitchell County, called a motion to adjourn. Now I have to say, I was very hopeful, extremely hopeful, that the executive committee meeting would be longer than one hour because there were two huge matters of business that were still on the table that needed to be done. One was reading the county by county vote totals of the vice chair race and number two we had 15 resolutions on 13 pages to get through. Ralph Heiss called a motion to adjourn. Guess what? It was seconded. Next, we had a the yay or the nay vote. Pretty much all I would say about how many people we have. Of the 200 
of about the 206 members that were in the room, 200 of the 206 said yay to adjourn. And only about six of us said nay. So the convention was, excuse me, the executive committee meeting or the, uh, the grand finale of the convention was over. And of course, I, as loud as I could, said, nay. And of course, Carolyn Justice, uh, sitting like six feet from me, not even that probably, um, said, you know, looked at me and I told her, I said, well, you know, we still had, uh, she asked me like, what, what? You know, why did you say no? And I said, well, we still had business to do. We had the vote totals and the resolutions. And she just told me, well, I guess Senator Ralph Heiss wants to go home. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, probably. But look, <clears throat> here's my thinking. Now, if you're in Ralph Heiss's shoes, you live over four hours away. You have a four hour drive back to Mitchell County at least. You probably at the convention all weekend want to go home. I understand that. However, that does not does not give you the right to it put on the exa- on the floor of the meeting a ma- does not give you the right to make a motion to adjourn. If you want to go home so badly, just go home. It is not fair to those of us who actually go to these conventions and expect and have the expectation to do party business. It's not fair. And and really, I, I cannot believe that an overwhelming majority of people voted to go home, to be dismissed. You know, I guess all, like 200 people, of the 206 were sleeping, were asleep or something, or I don't know. But <clears throat> fortunately, after emailing like five different people, I finally decided to post on my Facebook page, can somebody help me get the results in the vice chair race can by can? So I did that, post the video probably a month ago. That was good. Uh, the resolutions, um, the plan of organization states that this business will be carried over to the next executive committee meeting. But that meeting is not going to be till December. <laughs> so you got like all this, like, look at how thick that is. Can you see? I mean, that's, yeah. You know? All these pages of resolutions that won't get heard for another four months. It'll be six months since convention, right? All of them, you know. Not going to see the light of day for six months. Now, in a prior year, in 2014, this was in Cherokee at the Haraz Casino. Haraz, wow. At that executive committee meeting, um, we did not have a quorum. I think we were like... Instead of 120 people for quorum, we had 180. So we were like 40 people short of something. At that executive committee meeting, I think that was that was longer than this meeting may be. And, you know, it's weird. <laughs> it was probably the shortest executive committee meeting in one hour, exactly. But at that meeting in 2014, quorum was not met, so we could not do any more business. Um, and we still had resolutions to do. Now, fortunately... Um, the chairman at the time, Mr. Claude Pope, decided to call another executive committee meeting, I believe in August, um, to make sure we got these resolutions done, and they did. Now, I did not attend that meeting. Um, it was kind of weird in 2014, because um, you had a meeting in August, 
and then a couple weeks later you had a meeting in September but the meeting in September was a little bit more important because you were trying to decide who would get the um, Republican nomination for um, a court of appeals seat there's some sort of crazy prime you know rarely does it happen to where the state executive committee meeting has to make a decision like that but sometimes these weird primary rules just bear it out but um yeah i believe that's it but um i don't think there's a list of people for the resolutions committee now unfortunately there's not otherwise i would take the time to thank them but i would like to thank philip stevens uh for serving as the chair of the resolutions committee and i do hope at the december executive committee meeting that these um these resolutions um will be heard um hopefully there were 15 of them um and what was so great about Mr. Steven, Dr. Stevens, excuse me, what he did was he put out, I think there were five resolutions, and then he put out like ten more with an, um, an addendum memo, right, which I already read to you on another video, but pretty cool. And he also wrote a book about how uh, the county he, he's in, um, Robinson County, which is down the southern border border, South Carolina between their Fayetteville area Lumberton talked about how his county flipped wildly from Obama to Trump I'm going to try to read that book sooner or later hopefully but I think I've said all I need to say about the convention and the executive committee meetings that wraps it up I'll talk to you later bye bye